Tianbao Fueolu. Chapter 177. Zhuangzhou's Butterfly Dream. Night warmly enshrouded the entire city of Chang'an, and little Li Jinglong held little Hung Jun's hand as they passed through the ruined alleyway. They came to a stop in front of a door, which had a lock hanging off it. Li Jinglong picked up a brick and with several wax, shattered the rusted lock, before leading little Hung Jun inside. Where is this? Little Hung Jun asked. This is the place where, in the past, the devil seed in your body awakened, little Li Jinglong said. Come with me. The devil seed. Little Hung Jun's breathing immediately quickened. They came into the hall and faced De Renge's portrait. Little Li Jinglong knelt in front of it. De Renge's portrait seemed to flash with a golden light. It is not yet time, a rich, deep voice said, Li Jinglong. Little Hung Jun was greatly frightened by that voice, and he kept inching backwards. Little Li Jinglong turned to look at him, his eyes filled with pleading. Little Hung Jun understood, the meaning of that gaze was trust me. Little Hung Jun slowly walked towards the mural, and he asked timidly, Who are you? Mahamayuri, that voice replied, You have long since been unable to recognize me, but I still recognize you. I'm not Mahamayuri, Little Hung Jun replied. My dad is. A thousand years of reincarnation and rebirth, that voice said. Your father has long since escaped this endless cycle of rebirth and fate, but now, the devil seed rests in your body, so the power of Mahamayuri has also been passed on to you. Is it not laughable? However, that for the sake of escaping that fate, he ended up trapped in yet another cycle of cause and effect. Little Li Jinglong immediately kowtowed once at that and he gasped out, I was wrong, Akalanatha. I wish to redeem, the wrong that I once committed. Hung Jun carried Chen Feng as his horse cantered forward, and the distance between them and the exorcism department steadily decreased as they bounced along. The ground was rumbling, but the members of the exorcism department were all sitting in the hall, minding their own business and drinking tea. Yang Kuaz Hong said darkly, the time has come. Why do you still not set out to battle? Whether we fight or not is something that we decide, Mo Rajin said. It's not your place to comment on that. Yang Kuaz Hong. Chiu Yangxi said, you are under arrest, so sit right there and don't move. No matter how Yang Kuaz Hong schemed, he never thought that this group of children would insult him in such a way. He, who was so accustomed to prolonged deliberation and lengthy calculation, immediately began to feel wrong-footed and lost, and his voice trembled as he asked, What are you all waiting for? Lu Su asked in response, What right do you have to ask questions? Yang Kuaz Hong appraised the group in the room, before his gaze finally fell on Li Jinglong's form. Are you waiting for him to wake up? No, Chiu Yangxi said, his expression one of perfect innocence. But I don't want to tell you when we will set out to fight. That is for us to decide. You, Yang Kuaz Hong began to struggle and he demanded angrily, let me go. It was right then that the doors to the exorcism department swung open, and Hung Jun charged in, still on horseback. Hung Jun. Everyone hurried to get to their feet. Hung Jun carried Chen Feng inside, and Lu Su asked, Who's this? The owner of the heart lamp, Hung Jun said, panting. Chen Sui Ang's descendant. Chen Feng looked petrified as he studied the group of people in the hall, but upon seeing Yang Kuaz Hong, he immediately cried, Treacherous Chancellor. And saying that, he ran forward and spat on him with a pay. Where's his family? Mo Rajin knew that there was such a family. Li Jinglong had mentioned them before as well, that when he himself wasn't in Chang'an, Mo Rajin would be in charge of often going to check on them. But every time, Mo Rajin would set down the money and leave, and now that he didn't see Madame Duan, he immediately guessed that she might have run into something bad. Hung Jun didn't respond. When Chen Feng was reminded of his deceased mother, he began to cry again, so Mo Rajin beckoned him over. Come here. Chen Feng was very afraid, so Tu Raindak reached out and pulled him over. 
Chen Fen wanted to fight but to Raindict had just given birth and she naturally still had the scent of a mother and milk, which comforted Chen Feng somewhat. Hung Jun glanced at Yang Kuo's Hong and approached him. Lu Su glanced meaningfully at Hung Jun, indicating for him to walk out into the corridor with him. He whispered quietly to him, and Hung Jun's eyes widened, looking disbelievingly towards the silhouette of Yang Kuo's Hong in the hall. No, Hung Jun immediately said. I will not accept his conditions. Lu Su pulled Hung Jun aside a few more steps, silently studying Hung Jun. Hung Jun said quietly, the devil seed is in my body and this has always been my duty from the day I was born. My dad's duty was to live with the devil seed inside of him and finally turn into Mara. Akalanatha would then appear and purify Mara. My dad escaped this destiny, but now it's my turn. I cannot run anymore. Lu Su murmured, but Hung Jun, this time, I think the one that will die will not be you. Hung Jun immediately frowned at that. Lu Su continued, do you believe that the day the exorcism department met, the fate that was supposed to be set in stone had already changed? What does that mean? Hung Jun asked in reply, his head filled with fog. I don't understand. Lu Su said, the Kun God sent Sun Chi back into the past. Hung Jun. He sent him into a past where you two knew each other, Lu Su explained slowly, so that he can complete the cycle of that period of time. In the dream, little Li Jinglong climbed over the wall and said quietly, shooing. Little Hung Jun looked up, only to see Li Jinglong sitting astride on top of the wall. Little Li Jinglong lowered a ladder, and Hung Jun climbed over. What are you looking for me for now? Little Hung Jun's bark was evidently a little worse than his bite, because upon seeing little Li Jinglong's hands empty, he then asked, Where's the food? Little Li Jinglong handed him a food box, and the two of them sat down under the starry night. Hung Jun focused solely on eating, while Li Jinglong watched him from one side. Hung Jun had eaten too much that night, and he really couldn't eat any more, but he still did his best to stuff the food into his mouth. Little Li Jinglong seemed to be a little conflicted. Little Hung Jun finally finished that box of pastries, before saying, What's wrong? You look a little weird today. I, little Li Jinglong frowned. I don't know what I want to do. Little Hung Jun. Little Li Jinglong explained, I can't find my artifact anymore. It seems to be lost, but it also seems like it's there. It fades in and out of existence. It's not willing to come out and see me. Little Hung Jun asked, confused, where did you lose it? Right inside my body, little Li Jinglong replied, taking one of little Hung Jun's hands and pressing it to his own chest. Little Hung Jun reached out and touched little Li Jinglong's chest. Under the dim night sky, the distant land trembled rhythmically. That's impossible, Hung Jun said. He's returned to the past. That's right, Lu Su said. With the Zhuang Zhou's butterfly dream spell, the Kun God sent him back to the past. Hung Jun breathed in and out deeply, looking into Lu Su's eyes. He has returned to a time where nothing has been destined, Lu Su said. But as soon as the past changes, so will the present. If he can succeed, then everything will be easily resolved. Will Mara vanish? Hung Jun asked, frowning. I don't know, Lu Su said, shaking his head. That's why everyone is watching over him right now waiting for him to wake up. The heart lamp has already returned, but the Kun God says that the most important step has not yet been revealed. The quaking grew closer and closer, and the earth thundered with movement. Hung Jun turned back to look at the soundly sleeping Li Jinglong. There's no more time. Hung Jun had originally only come back to escort Chen Feng to the exorcism department, and hadn't expected to hear this. He said, I will go escort the emperor out of the city. I'll go with you, Hung Jun, Chiu Yangsi said to Hung Jun, stepping outside. Hung Jun wanted to tell him no, but Mo Rijin said, the situation outside is unclear, and it may be dangerous. Having one more person with you is good, because he can coordinate with you. 
Hong Jun and Xiu Yangxi were just about to leave when Yang Kuas Hong said, Hong Jun, I have several things that I wish to say to you. Tell me after I get back, Hong Jun replied. Do you not care about your little sister any longer? She's still alive. Yang Kuas Hong abruptly asked. Hong Jun, you. Suddenly, Yang Kuas Hong began to laugh loudly, and he said, inexorable doom approaches. Bring her back or kill her yourself on behalf of Wu Qiu. Don't waste your breath with him, Chiu Yangxi said. He's losing it. Yang Kuas Hong looked towards Hong Jun and Chiu Yangxi, his eyes filled with deep intent. Chiu Yangxi went to saddle his horse. Hong Jun swiftly strode into the room and knelt in front of the soundly sleeping Li Jinglong, tilting his head to press a deep kiss to his lips. Wait for me to come back. Hong Jun smoothed out the messy hairs on Li Jinglong's forehead, before he turned and left. Outside the western city gates, the earth-swallowing beasts had spread out, and they all roared in unison. In less than a day, the ice wall that Xian Ming had created was already melting and crumbling under the onslaught of the torrential rain. The ground lifted up and turned into a steep slope, gradually growing level with the city watchtowers. Countless devil soldiers charged up this steep slope to the city walls, and from there, into Chang'an. They stormed through the main streets, and the six armies vowed to fight to the death. Hu Sheng led his men to guard the main gates of Chang'an, while Chen Suan Li led his troops in an endless defense against the advances of the devil troops on the main street. The enemies have entered the city, the soldiers shouted angrily. Where are the exorcists? Someone shouted. But in that moment, they heard a whistle, and Hong Jun leaped over the rooftops and came flying in. His four throwing knives combined into one, and he slashed with the glaive in his hand. There was a huge boom, and an arc of light sped through the main street, countless devil soldiers clad in black armor cut in half at the waist. Chiu Yangxi came running in from the other end of the main street, and he pulled out the landscape brush. In that instant, the carvings and murals of Xin Qing Palace in the distance all came flying out, transforming into Yao beasts that streamed onto the scene, charging right for the devil troops. Hung Jun roared, Chen Su and Li. Follow behind me. Let's go. Chiu Yangxi remarked, I really don't know how the Battle of Tong Pass was fought, for things to have ended up so poorly. Hung Jun chuckled. We can't do without you. Among the members of the exorcism department, Li Jinglong, Mo Rijin, Lu Su, and Ashina Kyung's skills were very suited for individual battles, but they did not have enough power to spare when it came time to face down armies of people. The two who were truly suited for dealing with such battles were Atai and Xiu Yangxi. Atai could summon hurricanes and vortices of fire, and he attacked using powerful magic. Xiu Yangxi, on the other hand, was well versed in the summoning arts, and despite the way he would always end up summoning some sort of strange things, that summon always utterly rooted a good chunk of the enemy. However, during the great battle at the Tong Pass, Chiu Yangxi hadn't been there. As for Hung Jun, he could hold his own against an individual or against a charging army. In the past, Mo Rijin and the rest of them had made a simple ranking of the exorcist's power levels, and though Hung Jun was the youngest, he was undoubtedly the strongest when it came to fighting. At this moment, both of them were fresh reinforcements that were helping the six armies carve out an escape path. That immediately ripped open a gap in the fighting. The western gate was also not the place in Lushan's main force was attacking, and the pressure here gradually eased. With another slash, Hong Jun cut through the city gates, and the gate that weighed some thousands of pounds collapsed with an almighty rumble. The six armies thus protected the caravan as it dashed through the White Tiger Gate and out of the city. When will we go back? Chiu Yangxi saw that the black clouds on the vast plains were slowly dissipating. The devil troops were scattering through the battlefield, and everything was in chaos. The main enemy forces were all gathered at the east and south gates. Send them off to a safe place. Hung Jun shouted. The six armies ended up rushing out of Chang'an just like that, carving a bloody path westward.
The paths across the plains outside the city were all filled with wandering devil soldiers, and as soon as they saw the royal armies come charging through, they all surged forward. Just as Hung Jun was about to mount a horse, Chiu Yangtze whistled, and the ground began to glow as a lightning Jiao appeared, rising out of the earth below. As soon as the soldiers of the six armies saw this Jiao, their expressions changed and they began to shout. Hung Jun vaulted onto the Jiao's head, and Chiu Yangtze guided this Jiao in breathing lightning in all directions to get rid of the devil soldiers, protecting the army as they left. Why didn't you summon it earlier? Hung Jun shouted. Maintaining the barrier is very exhausting. Chiu Yangtze shouted back at Hung Jun. After all, summoning this huge thing from the dragon subduing tower required opening a passageway, and he also had to limit its movements outside the tower, which would expend a huge amount of energy. That Jiao's power, compared to the Dragon King's, was still lesser. It was alright when they were dealing with the devil soldiers, but it had no way to level several Li of land like Yang Huo and Xian Ming had with a single breath. That's enough. Hung Jun said, looking towards the mountains in the distance. They'll be safe once they get over there. The west side of Chang'an was covered in cliffs, and as long as they managed to make it to the hilly region, they would be able to escape successfully. Chiu Yangtze had one hand on the Jiao's head as he looked towards the plains, before suddenly saying, Hong Jun. Focus your energy, Hong Jun said. Isn't maintaining the barrier very tiring? It's not that tiring, Chiu Yangtze said. Is there a reason you're this nervous? Li Jinglong had truly frightened Hong Jun, and he didn't know who else would follow in Li Jinglong's footsteps. Chiu Yangtze continued, look down below. These soldiers that have been corrupted don't even have the same strength to fight that mortals do. Hung Jun looked down. Chiu Yangtze steered the lighting Jiao a little closer, and it spat out a line of electricity, zapping the devil soldiers into ash. These people are mortals under an Lushan's command, Hung Jun said. They've been corrupted by him. They've lost their consciousnesses, Chiu Yangtze explained. They don't understand how to set up an ambush. All they can do is charge mindlessly forward. Is not being afraid of death not strong enough? Hung Jun asked. At least they don't know to duck or to cooperate. Chiu Yangtze then had the lighting Jiao rise up into the air, before circling around for a second go, shouting, Go! Hung Jun and Chiu Yangtze caught up to those thousands of devil soldiers. With a single slash, both short cliffs to either side of the path came sliding down, burying their pursuers under them. The enemies seemed to be pretty easy to deal with. Hung Jun had noticed that these devil soldiers were not very clever, and An Lushan had truly become a victim of his own cleverness. If he had used the same strategy he had in the Battle of Luoyang, making mortals lead the charge, that would have been difficult to deal with. Now, he was using the devil chi in his own body to control the mortal armies under his command but he had also then caused them to lose the intelligence they needed to wage war. The city of Chang'an might still be able to be held, Chiu Yangtze murmured. Fewer and fewer soldiers pursued them, and the pressure eased immediately. The six armies protecting Li Longji had already charged through the valley and arrived in a safe region. Let's go, Chiu Yangtze said. Back to the city. Let me inform them first. Hung Jun and Chiu Yangtze leapt off the Jiao's back and swiftly caught up with the moving column of the army. Chen Su and Li and the rest of them were currently resting at the foot of a hill. Just as Hung Jun was about to inform Imperial Consort Yang however, he heard a piercing cry in the distance. The six armies had actually dragged Imperial Consort Yang out from within the caravan. Stop. Hung Jun was greatly incensed, and he pulled out his throwing knives. Electricity crackled all across his body. The desolate plain was in absolute chaos. The six armies were regrouping right there, and Li Longji, limping along, was helped out of the line by Gao Lishi. Hung Jun roared, what are you all trying to do? Chen Su and Li had never expected that Hung Jun would actually do as he said, and that he would manage to catch up after they left Chang'an. It's a direct order from the crown prince, 
Chen Suan Li said. The evil consort must be publicly executed, otherwise the six armies will not set forth. Hung Jun. End chapter. Tian Baofui Aolu. Chapter 178. Once more, the light of day. Chiu Yangxi stopped behind Hung Jun, and they saw Yang Yahuan, her hair loose and in disarray, push aside a row of soldiers. She was infuriated, and with her voice raised, she berated them, If you want to kill me, then just kill me. Why do I have to suffer such humiliation at your hands? Has your Yang family humiliated my brothers in arms under my command, as well as the soldiers who protect my country, any less? Chen Suanli roared back angrily. Yang Yahuan. Your crimes are innumerable. Today, if you do not die, then we will revolt. Instantly, weapons clattered to the ground in a wide swathe. Hung Jun had never seen such a scene before, and he actually found himself frozen at the sight of this. Your Majesty, please give the order, Yang Yahuan said, her voice trembling. I will die willingly. Chen Suanli produced Li Hung's handwritten order, and he said sternly, The Crown Prince has issued this order. Kong Hung Jun and Chiu Yangxi of the Exorcism Department, are you two planning on defying his edict? Hung Jun stepped forward but Chiu Yangxi followed right behind, his words lightening the accusation. Everyone here is a soldier who protects their family and their country. This is something that I have never doubted. It's just that, our family's youngest, if he's set on protecting the consort's life, then everyone might have no choice but to turn the other cheek. Everyone present had seen Chiu Yangxi directing his Jiao Dragon, and they all knew that they were no match for him. They all stepped backwards, their expressions full of fear. Chen Suanli replied coldly, You'd better have thought this through, Chiu Yangxi. As soon as you take this step in the wrong direction, it will be considered as defying an edict and committing treason. Chiu Yangxi, however, chuckled coldly. The rivers and mountains of this great Tang that lie in your grasp also seem to have come from my Yang family's hands. The edicts from your great Tang's emperor, to me, are less than dog shit. And as he spoke, Chiu Yangxi toyed with something in his hand, which he flashed in front of Chen Suan Li. In that instant, everyone was stunned. The soldiers of the six armies all backed away, and Gaolishi, who recognized that Jade Tally, said in a trembling voice, This is Yang Guang, Yang Guang's. Even Yang Yahuan was stunned at that, and she gasped quietly for breath. Hung Jun said, Come with me, back to Chang'an. But Chen Suanli said darkly, Chiu Yangxi, Kong Hung Jun, it looks like you have also been entranced by this Yao consort. All right, you exorcists are almighty and powerful, but if you want us and our kind to guard his majesty, that won't do. If the evil consort is not put to death today, even if you slaughter the six armies until only one person is left standing, that person will definitely not pick up his weapons and fight for you. Hung Jun, you. Hung Jun couldn't help breathing heavily. He could rescue Yang Yahuan, but there was no way for him to force these soldiers to willingly escort Li Longji. Yang Yahuan, however, looked towards Hung Jun and Chiu Yangxi, before shaking her head slightly. She turned and walked towards Li Longji, looking up to study his aged visage. Behind him, a voice suddenly sounded. Hung Jun, I have come to seek a soul from you. Li Jinglong promised me this once upon a time. Hung Jun, Kun. SHH, that voice said quietly. I only want hers. Bring this soul to me. Yang Yahuan would not stop sobbing, and she leaned forward to hug Li Longji. Li Longji was befuddled and confused, but he said, Evil witch. You deserve to die. And saying that, the emperor, despite being weighed down by age, actually threw Yang Yahuan to the ground before kicking her to the side. In that instant, Gao Lishi, Yang Yahuan, and even the soldiers around them all froze. Chen Suanli was first stunned, before he began to laugh loudly. You see. Kong Hung Jun. 
His Majesty will no longer suffer the deceptions of the Yang family. Kill her. Chen Suanli was afraid that things would change if he let them drag on any longer. His subordinates all turned their bows knocked with arrows towards Yang Yahuan. Stay your hand. Tears poured out of Yang Yahuan's eyes. She walked towards Hung Jun, before turning to face the soldiers of the six armies. Holding back her tears, she pulled out a dagger and handed it to Hung Jun. Despite having accepted death, I will not die at your hands. Yang Yahuan said miserably. Hung Jun looked towards Li Longji, only to see that his eyes had long since grown murky. Dao Lishi was supporting him, even as he murmured something. Where's Yahuan? Where's my Yahuan? Li Longji asked Dao Lishi. Hung Jun. Chiu Yangxi understood, and he explained quietly, he thought that the consort was Princess Taiping. When Yang Yahuan heard that cry of where's Yahuan, she immediately fell to her knees and began to sob loudly. Chen Suanli stepped forward once more and said, there's no point no matter how long you drag it out. Go. With just your life, you can free your Yang family. What would you have to regret about that? One of Hung Jun's knees was pressed to the ground, and he shut his eyes. His hand kept trembling, he could not find it in himself to stab that dagger into Yang Yahuan's chest. After Gur Gur left the court, I have always been waiting for this day to come, Yang Yahuan said quietly. Kong Hung Jun, your father saved my life. If you are to take it now, that can also be considered putting an end to this cycle. With one knee to the ground, Hung Jun embraced Yang Yahuan, before looking up at Chen Su and Li. The Xinhua soldiers had formed a group, protecting Li Longji in the midst of them. Dao Lishi was trembling as he said, Kong Hung Jun, why don't you hurry and do it? The enemies will catch up in just a bit. Yang Yahuan grasped Hung Jun's wrist with one hand, moving it so that the dagger pressed against her chest. Bring her soul to me, the Kun God's voice once again resounded in his ear. Hung Jun gritted his teeth and stabbed that dagger into Yang Yahuan's chest. Blood instantly spurted out and Hung Jun, his pain unbearable, let out a wild cry. Your Majesty, this lowly consort, will be leaving first. Yang Yahuan shut her eyes. Chen Suanli and the soldiers around them looked scornful, and finally, Chen Suanli couldn't resist saying, Little brother, just because she gifted you some pastries, several hundred liang of rewards, several steeds, and bolts of silk, you are willing to give up even your life in service of her in this moment. Have you ever considered how many people lost their families and their lives because of her and that traitorous Chancellor Yang Kuas Hong? The soldiers of the six armies all stood there expressionlessly, watching Hung Jun and Xiu Yangxi, who was standing behind him. How much blood and how many lives tainted her Yang family's hands? Chen Suanli was almost bellowing. The exorcism department declares that it is loyal to the Great Tang, yet you are nothing more than the Yang family's dogs. Hung Jun looked up at Chen Suanli, who instantly sensed danger. History often states that beauty is the ruin of a country, Hung Jun said darkly. Since you are so concerned over the well-being of the country and the people, why do you not blame the one who stands behind you? Chen Suanli Yang Yahuan's body began to glow faintly. Hung Jun said slowly, the crumbling of an empire is not due to the efforts of a single individual. Instead of blaming the death of the Great Tang on her, why don't you consider instead who caused all of this to happen? Hung Jun had asked Li Jinglong before, and in a rare occurrence, Li Jinglong had patiently explained what happened to him. Li Longji had never acted capriciously before, and using Yang Kuo's Hong to push out in Lushan many years ago was something that reflected the scheming heart of the emperor. The Great Tang used force to rule the country, and allowing the Jidushi of the border territories to expand their influence was something that led Li Lin Pio, Yang Kuo's Hong, and the likes to bear the blame. However, they too were nothing more than pawns under the command of the emperor, because if Li Longji had been set in not giving the Yang family power, even if Yang Yahuan's tricks were exceptional, how would the six armies have been able to bear their command? Give me the body, Chen Suanli said. 
we need to confirm whether or not she's actually breathed her last. It was in that instant that thousands of slivers of energy exploded out of Yang Yahuan's body and rose into the air. In the moment that she died, her body had expelled an extremely powerful Yao Hun. Chiu Yangxi took a step back, and Hung Jun was absolutely shocked. He put the body down and stood up, studying the sky. That Yao Hun circled in the air, glowing against the dark night as it rose into the sky. What's wrong? Chen Suanli looked in the direction Hung Jun was gazing, but he couldn't see anything. That Yao Hun flew towards Hung Jun and Chiu Yangxi, hovering in the air above them. The two of them swiftly turned to look, only to see the Yao Hun's long hair fluttering in the wind, its face as pale and bright as the moon. It glimmered slightly, and had about it a bit of the divine feeling that Lu Su had when he transformed into the white deer. Chiu Yangxi could immediately tell that what had left Yang Yahuan's body was an extremely powerful Yao Hun. They cannot see me, that Yao Hun said gently. My thanks, Mahamayuri. You, Hung Jun was astonished, but the Yao Hun said warmly, do not speak, lest you rouse their suspicions even more. And saying this, she floated towards Yang Yahuan's corpse. She leaned down and gently hugged her. Chen Suanli, however, took this moment to order his subordinates to examine the body, in order to prevent the sly exorcists who knew many spells from using some sort of magic to help Yang Yahuan, who should have been executed for her schemes, fake her death. The Yao Han slowly rose to her feet and let out a long sigh, before saying, I've finally, come out. This life has truly felt as if it was naught but a long dream. As she spoke, Chen Suanli said coldly, Kong Hung Jun, remember what you said today. Hung Jun did not touch that body anymore. Chen Suanli then gave his orders to the Xinwu army, which then passed the orders on to the rest of the soldiers. The armies marched out, protecting Li Longji in leaving. In the darkness, Li Longji asked Gao Lishi, when is Huan Air coming? Your Majesty, Gao Lishi said quietly. This is your personal expedition. The consort is currently in the palace, waiting for your triumphant return. Gao Lishi put on Li Longji's helmet for him, before helping him onto his horse. The six armies came surging forth like the tide, and without even looking back, Chen Suanli led the armies into the darkness. That Yao Han floated forward a little bit, looking unblinkingly at the sight of Li Longji riding away. A long time later, Chiu Yangxi asked heavily, Who are you? Yu Zeyun, the Yao Han replied quietly, before turning and looking at Hung Jun. Hung Jun suddenly remembered that when Wu Qiu had rebelled, she had stared at Imperial Consort Yang and said in a trembling voice, Little sister. You were never dead. Hung Jun said, his voice shaking. Yu Zeyun let out a light sigh. From that day on, your father sealed me away in Yang Yahuan's body. Outside Chang'an, night had fallen. Hu Shen was still leading the Longwu soldiers, who were not many in number, in a desperate struggle in the city. Many of his soldiers had already been sent off to escort Li Longji, and those who were left to guard the city were the defeated ones who had retreated from the front lines. As night fell, everyone was still waiting. Hung Jun and Chiu Yangxi had yet to return. Yang Kuaz Hong asked, his voice shaky, how long will all of you wait? Atai was also a little unable to sit still, and he glanced meaningfully at Mo Rijin. Mo Rijin replied, we're waiting for Hu Sheng to give the order. When he can't hold out any longer, then it'll be our turn. Fires burned throughout of the city. Death did not stop the devil troops, and they kept hacking and slashing at the city guards. The black clouds were almost above the city. This time, En Lushan's advance seemed to be a lot more cautious, as if he had sensed that within the battle formations in Chang'an, the exorcists would come up with some other strategy that would give them a miraculous win. The roiling devil Chi only advanced forward alongside the devil soldiers. We can't hold out any longer. Hu Sheng roared. Retreat. Hu Sheng unslung the longbow from his back and knocked a whistling arrow to it. He pointed it towards the northwestern side of Chang'an and loosed it. 
the arrow shot through the sky, shrilling through the air as it flew towards the exorcism department. The whistling arrow flew higher and higher into the sky, shooting towards the horizon, before it arced and whistling, plummeted towards the ground. A whistle shot past them. The retreat signal had come. The entire city had fled, and the mortal armies could no longer hold out. Everyone immediately rose, and Morijin said, the situations shifted. Li Jinglong was still soundly asleep. Yang Kuaz Hong asked, where are you going? Lu Su carried Li Jinglong onto a horse cart, and everyone left the exorcism department. Mo Rijin whistled and wiggled two fingers at Lu Su in the distance, who nodded in reply. The horse cart streaked through Chang'an. In this moment, almost all of the citizens had been evacuated, as well as the six armies and the guards. The entire city looked as if a hurricane had swept through it, and it was sunk into darkness. Lu Su dragged Yang Kuaz Hong into the empty, echoing palace and threw him to the ground. The Karpiao asked, what are you guys trying to do? Lu Su replied, guard this place and wait for Zhenqi to wake up. Where is this? Chen Feng had woken up. Lu Su had Chen Feng sit on the stairs, before he carried Li Jinglong up them and laid him out flat on the emperor's bed. This is the emperor's home, Lu Su explained to Chen Feng. Don't even think about going anywhere. Stay right here. Chen Fen nodded. Lu Su then found some pastries in the palace that hadn't yet been eaten, and he filled a food box and handed it to him, before saying to the Karpiao, I'm leaving this place to you, Zhao Zilong. As soon as the Karpiao heard that, it felt its soul leave its body. They wanted him to stay with Li Jinglong, who was in a coma and who wouldn't know what happened when he woke up, as well as Yang Kuaz Hong, the person it was most terrified of. What kind of joke was this? Didn't you say that you'd be guarding this place, the Karpiao immediately protested. Chen Feng asked, oh, a carp that knows how to talk. The Karpiao, at a time like this, you shouldn't be focused on a carp that can talk. Lu Su immediately started walking away, saying, I meant that you'll be guarding this place. The Karpiao immediately sprinted forward and hugged Lu Su's leg, shouting, don't go. Don't leave this lone fish behind. Isn't there a human staying with you? That's a child. Even he's not afraid of Xie Yu, so what are you afraid of? How could he know what kind of a person Xie Yu is, the Karpiao yelped, but with a kick, Lu Su sent the Karpiao flying and with a shua, he turned into a shadow and vanished. Chen Feng. The Karpiao. This time, Yang Kuaz Hong had truly been blamed for no reason at all. He had made his plans very meticulously but he hadn't expected that this group would play him like a fiddle, or that they would now leave him in the main hall of Xin Qing Palace and ignore him just like this. He kept struggling against his bonds, but the sigils binding him were something that he purposefully let his guard down for and let Chu Yangxi bind him with. He had no way to escape. He turned to look at the Karpiao, who immediately hid behind Chen Feng. Do you eat this? Chen Feng asked the Karpiao, before pinching a bit of a mung bean pastry off to feed it. The Karpiao watched him for a bit, before saying, You're really cute. Chen Feng. When Hung Jun was small, he must have been as cute as you, the Karpiao continued. While Madame Duan was still here, even though the Chen family was poor, she was still able to keep her child looking neat. Afterwards, when Li Jinglong started supporting them, Chen Feng could wear better clothes and eat better. Though there had been a period of several days where he had no one to look after him, Tu Reindict had cleaned him up slightly, and he looked just like a small, pretty piece of jade. Where's Antu? Chen Feng asked. Antu went to go hide from the Yeogwai, the Karpiao replied. She'll be here in just a bit. Chen Feng was asking about Tu Reindict. After the group left the exorcism department, they knew that they would not be able to avoid the great battle coming up, and it was too dangerous for Tu Reindict and her infant, so they had her head to Mount Li to hide for the time being. Originally, Chen Feng was supposed to leave with her but for some reason, 
he insisted on staying with his benefactor and wait for him to wake up. Everyone originally wanted to Raindic to forcibly take Chen Feng with her anyway but Lu Su stopped them out of the blue. Within the murk of destiny, we all have our own fates to follow, Lu Su said. If he was originally supposed to be the bearer of the heart lamp, having him stay may be something that was destined to happen. So, everyone let it go, and they let Chen Feng stay by Li Jinglong's side. Chen Feng held Li Jinglong's shriveled fingers, asking, he's so skinny. Is it because he can't fill his stomach? The Karpia replied, he's been asleep for many days now. Yang Kuo's Hong turned to look at Li Jinglong. It was then that Chen Feng climbed on top of Li Jinglong and studied his sleeping face. In that moment, there was a faint glow from Li Jinglong's chest. Chen Feng was a little sleepy again and he slumped down over Li Jinglong's body, shut his eyes and fell deeply asleep. End chapter